And why would you want to learn human design? It's giving you a comprehensive insight an overview of what somebody is. It enhances your understanding through practical application that all, not only helps you with your personal growth, but also your professional growth as well, because it leads to client satisfaction. And one of the tools that I'm going to give you is so profoundly helpful, thanks to Ra Uruhu, the founder and messenger of the human design system. It is about that body graph, but from a way more intricate space than most newcomers are aware of when they come to the human design system. We're gonna dive into this beautiful mandala from a very deep and profound, accurate level. It's called True Profile. And True Profile is one of the practical tools and techniques that you're gonna use when you learn it to integrate human design concepts into your life so that you have not only self-discovery and personal growth, just experiment with it, try it and see, and see how this practical guidance when we look at the body side of the body graph you're looking at the thing that's unconscious about you so it's unconscious it's design it's not something that's accessible by the mind the personality so we're going to be taking a look at the sun and earth of both the personality you can see that little green three right there as well as the design sun and earth. You see this five right here. This happens to be my chart, I'm a three five. And we're going to put it into context with the deeper layers, the true profile, the authentic profile that goes beyond just the basic uh, 12 profiles that most people are very familiar with if you've been studying human design at all for some time. This is written in your genetic code and the reason why I selected this as an aspect of what I wanted to go into next in rave cosmology in particular is because it's one of the most practical things that's going to get you in touch with your incarnation cross. So we just said personality and design sun earths. There's 192 possibilities. It's 70% of your imprint. It's part of your life's purpose or your life's work. So what we're going to do is talk about the core essence of your personality and that's your psychology as well as your physiological state of being in the world. How that is grounded into the earth, the earth which is the physical form, what gives us our capability of planting our cross is this uh, access right here, the nodal access that has also a conscious and an unconscious aspect as well. So in today's class, we'll talk a bit about how the personal destiny, transpersonal karma or fixed fate is part of your nature, in addition to the deep layers of the motivational frequencies and how you're determined to be uniquely you. So it goes beyond just the plain surface level of the chart where we're normally looking at channels and how those channels are linked up to each other in different sets of circuitry. You could think of the body graph like a circuit board. So in this example, I'm showing you an element of tantric circuitry that is core and intrinsic to us as human species being able to procreate and to not only make more but remain viable in physical form as we generate life in response to create life. So as we look at this aspect of the knowledge, this is going to be review for those of you who are in rave cartography because we want to start off with a basis of understanding that is at least bringing us up on the same page. It might have been a while since you took rave cartography. So I'm going to review this slide and it should be review. If it's not review, you haven't taken rave cartography and you can't move on in this particular class because rave cosmology has a prerequisite of cartography. Okay, so this first class free, you could say, is going to get everybody on the same page at least for the 12 basic profiles. So just as a review, personal destiny, lower trigram, you can see it says lower trigram here, one, two, and three, plus a little bit of the four, okay? The four and the six, still part of personal destiny. So these profiles, one, three, one, four, two, four, two, five, three, five, three, six, and four, six, are all under the realm of 
personal destiny, which means that your life is fulfilled through your own personal process. Your life purpose is fulfilled. It's not specific people that you have a karmic relationship with from past lives that you have some kind of action that needs to take place between you and them in order for your life work to be fulfilled. So hi, I'm one of these, three, five. We'll be using my chart as an example today. And obviously if you continue on in the course, we're gonna go deep into every single one of these true profiles, not just the surface profile, but true profiles so that you can get a really good grasp of how you're here to be uniquely you. Okay, so that personal destiny in this hexagram structure, okay, there's where I need to come back to because I didn't finish that. That's for the next uh, group. In the personal destiny, you're looking at people who are way more self-involved, self-absorbed. You could even say selfish on this end, where this transpersonal, you see the upper trigram line qualities, transpersonal four six is still part of personal destiny, and yet there is more connectivity. So remember the word connect, three and four, connect. Three, bump into, four, influence, network. So when we look at a four, six, even though their line qualities are on the upper trigram, they are still part of personal destiny. Meaning, if we switch over to the other end of the spectrum, the left angle, okay? Right angles down below, left angle. You who are left, you have a transpersonal karmic fulfillment of purpose, meaning you need allies. If you're in my life, I'm one of your allies. You need allies in order to fulfill your life's work. So in doing so, karma simply means action. When we're talking about left angles, we're talking about action from past lives that you're here to clean up karma with specific people. Okay, so that's the five one, five, two, six, two, and six, three. Those people who are fives personality or sixes personality have a karmic fulfillment of purpose with very specific people. We all incarnate on fractal lines. We are all connected before time was fractured into all of these little, we're all moments in time, fractured into all of these little pieces and spread out across the multiverses. Ra would call it the biverse, because conscious and unconscious. We all had a connective field to each other, so the closer that you are on the fractal line, the more connectivity you have with each other, the more you will re reincarnate again and again and again with certain fractal buddies, you could say, karmic people or not. I'm a personal destiny. That doesn't mean that I don't have other people in my, my, my life, transpersonal karma, who are here in my life. It's just that in this life, this is just the play for this life, that person has some action that they need to take with me in order to fulfill past life karma. Now this is very important because these people who are in your life or if you're in their life, now you know the dynamic or the balance of karma and you can source into your awareness of maybe the experiential process of remembering something from past life. Some people do remember those things. Ah, oh, this person is familiar. You know, this person feels like an old friend. Even from the moment that you meet them, I remember looking up into my husband's eyes and thinking, wow, him. I, 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 before I even went to that place where I met him, I'm talking big capital H, him. I knew I was going to meet him. And then when I met him, I knew, okay? So you notice that I didn't mention fixed fate, juxtaposition. They are the bridges that hold these two realms together. Four ones build strong networks of people from a foundational level in order to teach. These are the consummate teachers. They're on a fixed track. They're very much following that track and they're here to be able to bridge those two aspects of personal destiny and transpersonal karma. So their process, everyone's process is unique in their own, but we shall see as we go deeper into the public roles, the profiles, the 12 archetypal roles of how we are imprinted genetically as we spiral through space and time. 
Because remember, this is new life, new action, because karma is built from past life. So every time you have a new life, there's new action. So the laws of karma is part of my fulfillment of my purpose, being able to experiment trial and error and be able to teach from that place of attuning to the knowing inside of the experiential process as I work my way through life, adapting and universalizing. So now this is going to be interactive. Look down at your body graph, please, and just grab these two keynotes for yourself because it's not common that we usually use them in common vernacular. It's for you as an analyst to really go into what does it mean to adapt and project, relatively speaking, or introspect, or externalize, or universalize, or transition. What does it mean truly for you? What do you do? What, are, what is the action that you're taking in life? Or what is the awareness that you have? Or what is the process or the path that you're experiencing your way to fulfill your personal destiny, fixed fate? or karma, transpersonal karma. You're gonna do it in one of four ways, which can be subcategorized into eight ways. We learn that in incarnation cross analysis, where it's either the foundational learning or the fulfillment of the application of that purpose in four different ways. Purpose fulfilled through mind, the initiation of mind, quarter one. Purpose fulfilled through form, the civilizing effect of communication and action in the world of form. Purpose fulfilled through duality, the dualistic nature of me and you creates two, which is actually a third thing, the bonding in one's life, the making more on the physical plane. And then the last is transformation or mutation. So in the interpretation of these words in context with not only your profile that is married to a cross, this cross that you bear in this life, it doesn't have to be a burden, but when you marry this awareness of type relative to the public role profile, and now we're going to add on a new layer, what's under the surface, the true profile. Not the one that your mind thinks, oh, it's my lot in life, okay, in the shadow state, the not self, the third line, martyr, okay, martyr is poor me, <laughs> why me, <laughs> why again, why now, you know, why, why is life so hard, why is life so unfair, why is life so difficult, just one example of the martyr complex. We flip that and we find underneath that, is an archetype of priesthood. Priesthood meaning, don't do that, I tried that. That'll they'll burn you at the stake. That'll kill you. Don't eat that mushroom, you know? This is the experiential plane, and in order to make this work, we've got to adapt. That's one of the things that a three learns, either consciously or unconsciously, if it's an unconscious three. Okay, so here's the true archetypal role additional words that you can use either at the line level, but to be more accurate and precise, I want to take you to color. If you don't know what color is, don't worry, I'll explain in a bit. Color as a vibrational frequency is unstable, meaning it's not always going to come across this way. Just like everybody's not always a guru or Buddha or Bodhisattva. We all have life to work with too. Color is something that is going to be on or off depending on the vibratory nature of the being being in alignment or not. Okay, so color is either going to get distorted in a sense of perceptual reality, the perceptual reality, we call that distraction. Or what we're talking about today is the sun, earth on the personality side or the design side, and those can also transfer, okay? The mind is always going to transfer. It, uh, its distortion is called transference, okay? On, so on the mind side, you can be aware of being in that Buddha nature or that guru nature or in that preachy nature or in the prophet nature, or in the messenger nature, 
or in the teacher nature. You can be aware. And this is the most liberating thing I can tell you as far as my experiential process, not only for my own personal process of awareness, but in contributing the essence of either the survivability, learnability, or spirit consciousness of a being that I'm attuned to and attempting to serve and support and explain, sing them home to the nature of their true authentic being. This right here is a wonderful tool. And this is the emphasis that we're going to take on today's class. Okay, so we'll come back to these archetypes. Now, we're going to dive into the depth. If we can look here, we can see this is a 3-5. And we're going to dive into how the personality 3 and the design 3 are different things. And we use different words under the surface. So I'll say again, the design is the unconscious physical form. It's your physiology. The personality, the witness of this life, the awareness principle, the core of who you think you are, its psychological nature is the conscious awareness of being motivated to action or not. Either a personal process of motivation or a motivational process that is more externalized to a transpersonal process with the other. Okay, so everybody's gonna work differently. This is where we start with the 12 profiles, three and five, my example. Okay, so if we look down at the three and five now, we're gonna dive into a different way of looking at things, and it may seem uh, like a lot. Take a deep breath, we're not gonna learn everything today. We're just gonna focus on the mechanisms of how it works. Okay, so, but just for today, because it's easier to talk about self when you're a personal perspective person, I'm going to explain how it works for me and show you the relatability and the variability outside of that public role, that profile that I am. Martyr, consciously, heretic, unconsciously. So you can see then, underneath the surface of the personality, we have a color that is three, it's a priest, archetypally or priestess, you could say, if you want to talk to the femininity aspect. And then we have the color on the body side. Hello, Lavina over here with her teacher quality, teacher of messenger teacher, as far as the personality or design, sun earth. Underneath that five is a three color, again, priest. So priestess, priestess underneath that awareness. There's going to be all kinds of different combinations. And underneath this, we're looking at tonal cognition on the body side. Notice it says smell and taste and outer vision and inner vision and feeling and touch. Each one of these tonal cognitions is the physiological way that one is nourished by information and food and people too from the inside, okay, taking in life, determined to take in life uniquely and differently. We call that tone. So if we look at that, now in contrast with the body, priest, and for me, tone is feeling. If we look at the mind, priest, and for me, tone is security. <laughs> What we're looking at is a way of being aware on the psychological side and on the body, the physiological forms unaccessible by the personality. It's always running in the background. Okay, it's always part of the process. It's an additional tonal cognition is additional information that you can use to nourish your form. You can use it for diagnosis. You can use it for treatment on the form side. Over here, you can use it for an awareness of your awareness of purpose for us to be attuned to from an analytical place, not necessarily that you can always attune to it from the psychological awareness space, okay? But just knowing that these elements are there, that they're the intelligence of the mind or the intelligence of the form, okay? So those elements of the profile have a deeper nuance. We have the lines 
and then we have the colors, and then we have tones underneath. So if this is your first time seeing the depth to which human design profile can go, I know it can be overwhelming. Again, don't worry, you don't have to understand it all today. Just to know that it's there. And now you can see the fractal nature of these repeating patterns, the cyclical processes, all of us spiral through space and time, the genetic imprints of which ones the program is emphasizing and which ones are actually not emphasized as in an attunement to how we as human species are genetically programmed to evolve. So now we're gonna take a look a step further up the ladder you could speak to a 3-6, which is one step beyond me. If I'd have been born a little bit later, I would have been a 3-6, okay? And we know from our line quality, hexagram line qualities, that those both are harmonic to each other, similar in nature, but not the same. The same would be resonant. These are harmonic, so they're similar. Now, what you'll notice is we only have one color here. That's it. We only have one color possible color for harmonic people. Harmony is important for our harmonic people. You could think of them like the bridges between the dissonant profiles. I'm a 3-5, I'm dissonant, more common. When we have more variability, more difference, there's more change and there's more uniqueness as you can see now. So in the 3-6, we see we have the six line role model. We have a first color teacher, all three sixes, and all harmonic profiles, indeed, are gonna be first color on the body side. And then we look to the sixth color on the mind side. They're always gonna be motivated innocently, which is a motiveless motivation. So their mental awareness is always going to be driven to find the harmony in things and be, to be objective above it all, like the Buddha, Bodhisattva, a Buddha teacher underneath that martyr role model, okay? So we're looking at somebody whose personality construct is a martyr Buddha, and her, their design construct is a role model teacher, okay? That's the true profile. That's the true profile. What happens when a person is not in alignment? They have no access to the uniqueness of their form principle or their mental awareness. They're cognitively dumbed down. So they have no intelligence when they're not operating in alignment. And what happens is color transfers. Color transfers. What does that mean? It means that it doesn't show up the way it's supposed to when you're not operating in alignment, when you're not making decisions that are trustworthy in alignment with your form and this life's purpose fulfilled through being. What happens is now you become somebody who is not a teacher and is not a Buddha. So you're running around the martyr, potentially trying to be the role model and failing at the full fulfillment of the purpose because you have no access to this. So it shows us why making decisions that you can trust, entering into the experiment of being your own authority is so critical and so valuable and so important. Because if you're not operating in alignment, none of this stuff I'm telling you about the true profile matters because you have no access to it. Now what happens when you're operating in alignment? This right here can lock in. The physical form, the one's physiology, color can lock. But on the psychological nature, no matter how much you're living life in alignment on the physical side, the mind still transfers. It's a binary. It'll always do that. So the point is not to get the mind not to transfer, not to uh, see things from a skewed perspective. You're always going to vacillate or move back and forth in your perceptual awareness. What matters is the awareness of your consciousness, the consciousness that is aware of its Buddha nature or not. 
when you're in that process of being transferred, so in this person's case, what happens is no intelligence, no intelligence of one's unique nature. And when you are not operating in alignment, or whether you are operating in alignment, through color transference, can you be aware of the desirous desperation to force or to make something happen? You're not supposed to do that. You're an innocence motivation person. So can you be aware of that thing happening? And when you catch yourself in that awareness, can you ask, who's watching? This is the one place in human design where it should be quite clear relative to your nature of awareness that you can catch your mind looking at your mind. This is your mind looking at the pattern of your mind within a pattern that is greater than what we can even comprehend. And when you catch yourself in that awareness of who's watching, there is a potential to connect in with the passenger consciousness, this intelligence of being, the being that was you before time was time, the eternal nature of you. That eternal nature of you is just that. It's eternal. It doesn't die. And it's also sitting there, Buddha nature, yeah, with awareness of being something more, something beyond than just what you think of as yourself. But in this life and in this time, this era, this body coming online with the awareness principle of form knowledge, that's what this system is, it's form knowledge. The form knowledge coming online aligns oneself to right action. And that right action sourced from the nature of the true being, the totality of you within the totality of us, which is all one thing, aligns us to right action. And that brings the spirit of abundance that arises from within the alignment to the nature of being. Success for projectors, satisfaction for generators, peace for manifestors, surprise for our reflectors. That is your spirit. And that happens when life is making decisions through you, it feels like, rather than your mind trying to force things in the outside world to line up with what you expect or what you think needs to happen. It all comes back to you and you being your own authority. And you are the only one that can experience the quality of your consciousness because no one else lives inside of your mind with you. All we can do is hear what you say to us and the resonance of truth or not, Truth is individual. Each one of you is your own experimental vibrational frequency that is singing its soul song or not. And when you get attuned to the vehicle, now something lives inside of you, breathes inside of you that is beyond just the regular day-to-day -day mundane reality. Something powerful breaks through that mundane reality and mutates you so that you are lived, breathed, into conscious awareness of being, an experiment of consciousness embodied in this form, and that eternal nature of the awareness principle that you are and shall remain eternal goes on. Death is just a doorway. It's a transformation into a new form. We never really die. Not really. This form, yes, gets recycled. So. As we evolve through the profiles, and no one is ever better than anyone else, the program itself is actually emphasizing specific qualities, uh, not to be confused with line qualities in, if you're a BG5 student, specific characteristics of the color nature and the tonal cognition, because it's evolving us towards quad rightness, the rave. So there are far more of that evolutionary slant towards the fullest mutation of what a human being is. Right here and now, for six, you are someone more than just that opportunistic role model. Whatever your nature is, the color underneath the line quality, that is part of the fulfillment of your purpose. It's part of the nature of your incarnative cross this incarnate to be embodied in the flesh. The personality construct is a witness to this life. And the form dominates once one lives in alignment. 
rather than trying to make decisions from a mental space, which is not intelligent. You always lose intelligence when you make mental decisions. When you're attuned to the body and the form, this vehicle, this experience of being, life is so much sweeter in my terms, more satisfying if you are generative, more peaceful if you're manifested, more surprising if that is your nature of being. Okay, so when you look at this element of being, what we're going to be looking at, besides this transitional profile, we call these harmonic transitional profiles, to use technical term, what you're looking at, there's something quite odd. They're limited in their motivation. What we look at here is in this 4-6, again, another one, just like what we had up here with the 3-5, with this 4-6, the dissonant profile, meaning the line qualities of the personality and the line qualities of the design do not harmonize and we have no resonant profiles otherwise we would be stagnant and stuck we would not evolve this is for the evolutionary process of the human species and so what you're looking at there's all these different types of motivational frequencies personality sun earth or physical determinations for one's attunement to being determined to take in life uniquely see all the different colors there so it's just an interesting dynamic. When we look at a transitional profile, here's the 4-1, further up the evolutionary spiral. Not good, not bad, not right, not wrong. It's always an evolutionary spiral. So there is no better than in public role or profile. What you're looking at again is we have a six color Buddha and a first color teacher. And you'll notice that that pattern continues on with all of them. It's called chains. If you want to learn deeper about chains as a, di um, <laughs> there's so many words, differentiation degree practitioner, you can go and take that class uh, at IHDS. It's quite fascinating. It's a little bit overwhelming at times, I know, looking at this and seeing there's a lot of data there. I don't know what to look at. But what I'm doing now is focusing you, your attention on the harmonic profile, especially if you're one of these harmonic profiles. Look, the only possibility, again, color six, Buddha nature, personality, unconscious, color one, teacher. So that means there's a different quality to that five, two, that they have no access to these other colors, none whatsoever. It's only the dissonant profiles, okay? No five, two was ever born with any other color, one, two, three, or five on the personality side, or two, three, four, five, six on the design side. That's true for all harmonic profiles, okay? So that means something very important when it comes to us now looking again at personal destiny, fixed fate and transpersonal karma. You see the fixed fate juxtaposition, that's why the arrow up and down. To juxtapose two very different things uh, next to each other, like the exaltations and detriments, okay? This is just pointing to up, okay? Upper trigram, these are pointing to lower trigram. This is pointing to both, right? It's got a upper trigram four, and it's got a lower trigram one. So that's what those arrows mean. Then we look at the deeper layers as we have done, and we see that there is a six color and a first color. Six color personality, first color body, always. For all of the harmonics, so here we can see them big picture view. Harmonics are, uh, this is the dissonance, so hang on. <laughs> harmonics are, there we go, one, four, Okay, two and five, three and six, four, one, five, two, and six, three. So then, if you go and look at Jovian Archive, I've done this lots in classes, so I won't do this with you right now, but you know, you go over to statistics, you can see how much less people are born as the glue harmonics holding us together in this evolutionary spiral. And if most people are not operating in alignment, then our people who are designed to be attuned to harmony and innocently in non-interference, 
or non-desperation to try and force something specific, non-desirous to try and force something specific to happen. If they're all operating in alignment, what happens to a chain when something's off? Wiggles, yeah? There's no, there's no harmonic glue that holds this spiral together. So it's very important. I know that they don't get a lot of attention, the harmonic profiles, because there's not as many of them. We don't come across them every day. Yeah, we've always got our three fives and our one threes and our two fours and our four sixes and five ones and six twos. They're much more common, much more plentiful. But the things like the four one, see the fixed fate juxtaposition holding like a bridge, holding personal destiny and transpersonal karma together, these are also like a kind of glue. And it is important that we find them and attune them to their sovereign nature of being. I love that phrase. I can feel something move inside, enlighten and open up inside when I say that. Because everyone is deserving of making decisions that they can trust. And when they do that over some time and they attune to right action with self or self with other or whatever the case may be, impact, what have you, guidance, advice. When they do that, now we're talking to the harmonics. When they do that from an innocently non-action oriented to force something specific to happen, now that chain is smoother. The evolutionary process is more held together because this is what they do for us. They teach. On the physical form side, they are all teachers. At the core fundamental truth of what they do for us, they teach. Nothing more important for a one four, I don't care what type they are, than their education. A solid foundation so that they can externalize their teaching to others about what it is to be harmonious in the world. Harmony, 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 harmony. So it is my <laughs> desire that you grab some things from this, even if you never move forward in this course, that you are looking at the public roles that we, costumes that we can wear in our lives in a different light. And especially the specialness and the vulnerability or the importance of these harmonic profiles, looking at them in such a unique way about how different they really are from the rest of us. So personal destiny, again, research and development, R&D. You ever work in R&D? <laughs> R&D down there. And then we have the four, six, which is still part of personal destiny, but upper trigram, so more externalized. And then we have the four, one, the bridge, the glue, holding personal destiny and transpersonal karma together. And then we have our people who are here literally to save or rescue or fix. Not everybody, just the right ones for you. Or role model or lead by lived example. Not everyone, just the right ones for you. So real specific, I want you to see that the true profile has so much more to offer you if you would, if it was right for you to investigate into a little bit deeper layer of this knowledge. Okay, so real brief, personality crystal, design crystal, magnetic monopole, that 88 degree separation of the personality consciousness versus design consciousness. It creates a different feed, if you will, a different energetic feed from the cosmos, because that's what we're doing here. We're just analyzing planetary imprints on our genetic potentials, the genetic imprinting from the cellular matrix of our solar system. If you think of our, our solar system as a cell, the nucleus, the sun, okay, 70%, and then wherever those planets are, the feed from the star field, not only of the sun, but the star field beyond, penetrating into our genetics. So if we had a 90 degree angle, we would have same with same because the 88 degree angle right there is the thing that makes it more possible, more possible. 90 degree stagnation. We would have three threes probably and four fours and five fives and six sixes. And we just wouldn't have that evolutionary tension, you could say, or dynamic 
um, evolutionary flow. So as an example, instead of having three fives, we would have five fives. And what's the fun in that? <laughs> where we have dissonance, the dissonant profiles, is usually where there's a little bit more of a challenge to be aware. So um, the reason being is because there's no harmonic process. And not that it's bad or wrong, just that it's different. 